1989, the Cleveland Cavaliers set a franchise record with 57 victories. Tied for the league's best mark at home, the young Cavs drew the Chicago Bulls in the first round of the playoffs, a team they totally dominated this season. With that in mind, the Cavs' confidence was at an all-time high. The Chicago Bulls realized that what happens during the regular season has no bearing in the playoffs. In Game 1, the Cavaliers faced a tough task without Mark Price, who could only watch another takeoff of Air Jordan. With Craig Hodges lighting it up from long range, the Bulls shot past the Cavs. The Cavaliers fought all year for the home court advantage. Now they've lost it. Chicago holds the upper hand, and it's the Bulls who are oozing with confidence. A capacity crowd at Richfield Coliseum in Ohio as CBS Sports continues its first week coverage of the 1989 NBA playoff. And Craig Hodges, the guards, and Doug Collins needed his team to get healthy and they have and they responded in game one for the Cavaliers Larry Nance Mike Sanders and Brad Doherty and in the backcourt Ron Harper and Mark Bryce Lenny Wilkins one of two active coaches who have won NBA titles Pat Riley being the other one the officials working game number two Earl Strom Tommy Nunez and Ed Middleton and we're set to go Cleveland in white the Bulls in red question is can the Bulls bring another upset on the road and it's controlled finally by Chicago. Everything for Chicago is controlling the tempo of the game. If they can establish the deep corner perimeter shots, then Michael Jordan and the big man can work inside. They go to the corner, and Scottie Pippen wide open, hits a three. He was four for four from three-point range and picks up where he left off. Now, they're going to test Mark Price. They'll be bumping him and trying to hit him as he comes off the screen. You see, right there, he's going to have difficulty, Dick, any time that he tries to spread the legs. He lost the ball out of bounds. A quick shot by Hodges and the rebound by Harper. Ron Harper, one of the most exciting open court players, but you don't want him handling the ball coming up court. No, nah, because he's thinking shot first rather than the crispness and the working of the ball in their half-court offense. Doherty from the pass from Nance. Side out pass. And Brad Doherty has come under criticism from fans and press. Amazingly enough, an all-star in two of his first three years has scored for Cleveland. Inside a good move by Horace Grant. Here's Price, and Hodges will be guarding him. Well, it'd be interesting that there he is. That's the one. That's what the Cavs didn't get. And the crowd erupts. Michael Jordan misses his first shot of the game and Doherty the rebound. Already the pace is faster than they played four quarters the other night. They're looking for Sanders posting up Pippen inside. Pippen has a tendency to get into early foul trouble. And that would be a big loss for Chicago if he did. Sanders. Chicago didn't get the rebound and Harper buries one and the Cavaliers have their first lead of the game. Just be cognizant of Price's decision-making with the passing. Harper is guarding Jordan. He's done a good job against Michael, and so has Elo off the bench on Jordan this year. But Grant sees the shot fall off, and now Cleveland again. Cavaliers won all six games in the regular season and then stunned Friday night in game one. Here's Doherty, good position. Ron Harper. Sanders open left of the key. And that's the one thing the Cavaliers didn't do on Friday. They never got second shot. They only had seven for the entire game, and already here we play two and a half minutes. They have three second attempts. Less than nine and a half remaining, first period. Isolating Jordan. Now Grant setting a screen. That's where they want to send Jordan to the baseline so they can trap him. Now the Cavaliers want Horace Grant to take the outside shot, and if he can hit that, that'll be a bonus for Chicago. Larry Nance comes back and misses, and the rebound into the hands of Jordan, 8-7 to seven Cleveland. See, both coaches like the pace right now. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, physical contact 
in the low post area as of yet. One thing the Bulls have not done successfully is get the ball in the hands of center Bill Cartwright. Craig Hodges hits one from the corner, came around the screen, and the Bulls have regained the lead. But Chicago must get the ball into Cartwright's hands to do something against Cleveland's interior defense. As this game wears on, it'll be interesting to see Hodges is totally trying to deny Price any kind of a pass. He's using his forearms on him, bumping him around, and that's what you must do. Cartwright gave him a shot, and Price misses. The ball batted out into the hands of Ron Harper. So Harper has had two baskets as a result of being in the right place at the right time, but Pippen beats his man Sanders down court and gets the basket and draws the foul. Now keep an eye on this replay on Price there, right in the center of your screen. You'll see Hodges coming around. They're going to pick him off. That's a stagger, stagger pick. Now he's going to be acting because naturally he knows that he is going to be taking physical punishment today. Now here Price is trying to get open. Now watch as he sets the back pick. That's a seven foot two, 250 pound guy laying it on him. A breakaway foul was called against Sanders and Pippen will get two shots at the line. Making one shot in possession. Lenny Wilkins who played with the Cavaliers for two years, maybe one of the last player coaches in the NBA. Harper was gambling for the steal. Pippen again from the corner. Hartwright tips it in, and the Chicago Bulls have opened up a four-point lead. Hartwright scored only two points in game one, and they're going to call the blocking foul against Craig Hodges. Uh, Hodges just patted Tommy Nunez on the rump and told him, listen, yeah, you're right, that was a good call. But he knows that's part of his job today, to lay it on Price and make him earn every single catch. Sanders in the lane, to reject it by Quinn. Price goes for three. And Harper inside, and a loose ball foul has been called against Sanders at C. No, it's against Craig Hodges, and that is his second personal foul. And Doug Collins not taking any chances will bring in Sam Vincent. So the best three-point shooter the Bulls have, Craig Hodges leaves, and Vincent comes in. Now, Craig had an inspirational game the other night, Dick. I mean, he made three in a row and, and really put the pressure on and loosened things up. The Bulls are 5-1 in regular season when he started. Harper drives in against Vincent and draws the foul. What does Vincent's presence do as far as Cleveland attacking him? Vincent and draws the foul. What does Vincent's presence do as far as Cleveland attacking him? Well, like, what uh, Vincent does for them, it gives them another guy who can push the ball off the dribble along with Michael Jordan. He's a penetrator, and he has a nice game, but it's from the top of the circle. He's not that tough in the corners. Now, on every side court out of bounds today, uh, you will be seeing the Chicago Bulls in a 3-2 matchup zone, and that's exactly what they were in on that last possession. They played a lot of zone down the stretch when they had a lot of injuries on the team when Hodges and Paxson were out. I think we're supposed to be saying trap and not zone. <laughs> you corrected that. Ron Harper, who fouled out with eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter, has six points to lead the Cavaliers, who trail by two. And they're trapping Vincent, double teaming with Nance and Price. Cartwright did not travel. The crowd thought so. Jordan in the lane with a left-handed shot. And Grant stepped on the line out of bounds. So Excellent shot clock, Dick, that time by Larry Nance. Really got a good piece of it. Interestingly enough, with 7.26 to go in the first quarter, Michael Jordan is the only Chicago Bulls starter who has not scored. He has only taken two shots. But they have nice ball distribution. Every time Jordan is getting double teamed, he is finding the free man. Vincent sticking with Price. Nance. This is from the corner. Larry Nance had a disappointing game number one. They expect leadership from the veteran at that spot. He didn't give it to him in that game. Under seven minutes to go first quarter. Dick Stockton along with Hubie Brown and Jim Brandt with us today. Posting up. Jordan has passed away and he lost it out of bounds. Good defensive play by Harper. Yes, on the rise of that shot. 
as Jordan left the ground. Harper always gambling. Watch him stick the hand in. There it is right there and force the ball to go off of Jordan's hand. The shots are off the front of the rim. They have not had a substitution in this game, and we're nearly halfway through the first quarter. Actually, other than Sam Vincent, we should say. Steal by Jordan. Jordan and Harper. And he laid it up despite the fact he didn't have full control. Well, that time the Bulls were in a 1-3-1 half-court trap. And the it's first points of the game for Jordan, Yubi. Here's another Chicago trap here. Well, they give it to you, and then they disguise it and match up with you man-to-man. -man. What they're trying to do is run the clock. Three-point attempt is wild, but there's Nance with another offensive rebound. And so Cleveland, which did not get second shots, as we said, making the most of them here in the first quarter. Well, if I'm Lenny Wilkins, I'm happy because they're very, very active inside. Steal by Harper. Two on two, and Harper... points for Ron Harper and we're tied at 16 with 545 to go in the opening period Jordan gets three and he comes back with two so Michael Jordan's machine is now running without question well this is always a big fight between Harper and Jordan big major contest Vincent guarding price Hodges started picked up two early fouls and had a bad pass thrown by Gordy over Nance's head in this sequence, you'll see Harper gambling for the steal. Lenny Wilkins says that he doesn't mind that Harper anticipates with George because he feels that's when he's at his best. John Hot Rod Williams, the sixth man who can play forward and center and missed all seven of his shots in game one, has come in now as George gets his third interior basket. And it's Chicago by four. Jordan has hit his last three shots. Price goes around the screen. His second hoop. See, that's what they need. The thing that takes the pressure off the other four guys because Price will keep shooting and open things up. An offensive foul called against Scotty Pippen. He tried to split three defenders and couldn't. We have two of the best defensive rotating teams in the league here today. They are extremely difficult to score on by the points against there in the air, but their rotations are very, very quick. Williams replaced Sanders in the lineup. Cleveland's standing around right now, and they have nine on the shot clock. This looks like Friday night's game right here. It's the first time. Nance. He got open. Larry Nance, who got off to a slow start, but still wound up with 18 points. 4.22 remaining in the first quarter. Grant working against Nance, one-on-one. -on -one. Rebound by Larry Nance. He looks like a man possessed so far in this game. And Horace Grant may be called for the loose ball foul. Well, it's a tough foul because it puts him in the penalty. It is the fourth uh, team Okay, foul. they had that four up there. Okay, that's my fault. I'm sorry. Well, just don't do that again. <laughs> Cleveland, <laughs> you're right. Because none of us ever make mistakes. Yeah. Cavaliers, by the way, have only one team foul. They're in the trap. Harper. This is outside. Vincent the rebound. Tied at 20 with four minutes exactly remaining in the first quarter. Pippen guarded by Price now on this matchup. Vincent left open. Now Price finds Vincent. And Pippen with a smart turnaround. Falls off the rim. Cleveland looking for the lead again. And Vincent's going to tie up Mark Price with a nice play. See, when you have Price and Harper coming at you in the open floor, you must guard both people. In the game the other night, in anything in transition, Chicago would just drop back knowing that the perimeter threat was not there. This was a very good play by Vincent. In a playoff game, you're not going to get a foul in that situation. Charles Davis will replace Scottie Pippen, who goes out having scored six. But Davis, who had his best game of the year, number 22 against the Cavaliers, has been a tough, scrappy backup who can handle both forward spots. They're going to jump it again. Violation on the jump. Naturally, the crowd is totally sympathetic with Mark Price. Anytime that he's involved in any form of contact, they want a foul call. Understandable. Three and a half remaining in the opening stanza. 20-20 to score. Chicago won here in Cleveland Friday night with a big upset. Vincent misses from the corner and the rebound by Doherty. So they miss Hodges when he's on the bench. Pass. Missed the 
first shot. Price from beyond midcourt was going for Nance. Maybe the longest lob pass we've seen all year, but they couldn't convert. And Grant follows up Jordan Smith to give Chicago the lead. Today when you're watching uh, Cleveland defensively, you'll see two and three guys go to Michael Jordan. When the shot goes up now, the other two Bulls who are not played are going to be all over that offensive play. Doherty is fouled by Cartwright. Chicago is in the penalty, and a timeout will be called by the Bulls. Darnell Valentine, the backup point guard, will give Mark Price a rest when we come back to Richfield Coliseum. Game. Yeah, but I like what Doherty said. He said, I, I, I refuse to force things in the low post area. If they're going to double and triple team me, I'm going to pass the ball to the nearest open man. And what happened the other night? They just missed the shots. Price on the sidelines getting his first rest. And the veteran eight-year pro, Darnell Valentine, is in now at point guard. And the one thing Lenny Wilkins told us is that he wants Valentine to shoot when he has the shot. He's been reluctant. But meanwhile, Chicago with the ball, leading by one, and Jordan tips up his own miss. And after a slow start, Michael has eight points to lead the Bulls. When you're watching Michael, anytime he's overplayed, you'll always see him change direction. He's a nightmare to try to guard in the half-court offense. Now, Cleveland used Craig Elo to start instead of Price in game one, and that didn't really work out. They needed a point guard, and Harper wasn't the man for the job. Coming off a Doherty screen, Ron Harper misses Grant with the rebound. Grant had 13 rebounds, had a very fine game one. That's what the Bulls want from him. Winding down to the two-minute mark of the opening period, the Bulls have led most of this first quarter, but not by a big margin. And a great play inside by Horace Grant, who has eight points, tying it with Jordan. See, the movement in the Chicago half-court offense is the best that it's been in a long time. The picks are there, and the passes are right on the money. Jordan gambling for the steal. Ten on the shot clock, off the foot of Nance. Now seven. Nance will fire it up long range, and so the Bulls did stop Cleveland in a low post situation effectively. Well, see, in the last two possessions, they've been down double teaming very quickly on the post. Now here comes Craig Elo who can give them three positions. Point guard, second guard, small forward, and he is a very big three-point threat. Ron Harper leaves the game. John Paxson also checks in for the Chicago Bulls as Jordan gets a rest with 1.38 to go in the quarter. As he's spotting him up effectively, Doug Collins. Paxson he has the ability to hit from outside. Bulls struggled from that area, though, in the waning games of the season. Out of bounds, and they turn it over. That was a perfect example, Dick, of any time that you're at playoff and they're allowing physical contact, you cannot try to pass the basketball with one hand. You got to hold it with two hands. That way you can ward off the contact. Nance goes out. He's been shooting badly in this game, and Phil Hubbard has come in. Phil Hubbard has been a forgotten man, but a, a good, loyal team per performer for the Cavaliers. John Williams inside will be called for the foul over the top on Horace Grant. So Phil Hubbard, a surprise substitution, an experienced player who had seen a lot of action before the Nance deal with Phoenix several years ago. Well, you know, we could see Williams there a little uh, frustrated. You know, the other night, Dickie goes 0 for 7, and there he missed a little baby hook shot. All he needs is a, a field goal or two to get it going. You saw Pippen back in the lineup, so up front it's Pippen, Cartwright, and Davis for the Bulls with under a minute to go in the first quarter. Ten on the shot clock. With this second unit, this is basically a pick and roll group. Vincent shooting over Valentine, and Sam Vincent has given the Bulls the seven point lead. They're on an eight to one run. The biggest lead by either club in this quarter. Now they're in a half court trap right now. You always try to camouflage weak defensive players by playing gimmicks. Inside off the hands of Vincent. Elo out of bounds will call Vincent with the foul with 30 seconds left. What have they done for Mark Price at the bench? Tim Brand, I know you're over there. Timmy? Dick, what they're trying to do to keep that muscle from tightening up is they're keeping the heat on it. So Mark Price has got a heat pack on it right now. But, you know, right now they're more concerned with his wind. He's just getting a good break here. Everything seems to be fine with his muscle. They're just trying to get his wind back, and he'll be right back in the ballgame. All right, Timmy, thank you. Craig Hodges, who had to come out early with two personal fouls, has gone in replacing... Bill Cartwright, a small Chicago lineup now as they're going to play for the offense with 30 seconds to go. Elo yeah. hits the first free throw. The Cavaliers have not scored a basket in the last four minutes of this quarter. 
He's the Michael Cooper of this team. Lenny Wilkins says he does the same thing Cooper does. As you said, three positions, the outside shot. Because he can guard all three positions. Lenny really likes him for that. And then he is a courageous player who plays big in the pressure game from a scoring standpoint. A small team right now with three guards and two forwards for the Bulls. Well, the reason for that is so that they can take you off the dribble and then kick it out because they have all their perimeter guys in. Eight on the shot clock. You see the game clock. Pippen is double teamed effectively and a foul. The Cavaliers wanted a jump ball, but a foul called. It's a penalty, of course, and the Bulls will go to the line to shoot two. Foul is on Elo, his first. Well, Doug, Doug is looking out here right now because he knows everything is going good for him. You know, he's getting all the calls, and uh, that was a, an excellent uh, uh, call by Eddie Middleton because the defensive player had the uh, shooter uh, Pippen right by the wrist. Dave Corzine is in the game, and so they're looking for the rebounds defensively, and Mark Price, with nine seconds to go, replaces Phil Hubbard, so he is the three-point threat in the waning seconds. Scotty Pippen on the free throw line. 22 points in the first game have been ice cold from the field before Friday night's affair. See, going at the other end of the floor, we have nine seconds, and by Cleveland going to their two point guards, Valentine and Price, and then Elo, they have three guys that can shoot from the perimeter. Missed the second free throw, Pippen dives and saves it with five seconds to go. Paxson into Davis's hand. Corzine doesn't get it off the line. The basket does not count. No question that the shot was taken after the buzzer sounded. And after one period of play, the upset-minded Bulls are doing it again. The Cleveland 29-23. side and if they get eliminated that'll bring smiles to LA's face but we've got a long road before that Chicago in their half court 3-2 matchup out of bounds it is still Cleveland ball the Cavaliers did not make a basket as you see in the last four and a half minutes they start out with Mark Price Craig Elo at guard and John Williams Brad Doherty and Larry Nance up front Hodges Paxson Davis Pippen and Corzine Nance has the shot blocked it was Pippen who got a piece of it. Jordan does not start the second period for the Bulls. Elo with one second on the clock hits it. Craig Elo. Excellent passing out of the trap that time, Dick. Remember, it's not the first pass that the guy will be open. It's the second pass. Interesting that Jordan is not starting this quarter. Well, Doug is very comfortable with this group. They've done a very nice job since they've been out on the floor. Taking excellent shot opportunities. Porzine over Doherty. Rebound by Hot Rod Williams. Elo quickly back, guarded by Paxson. Lob pass thrown over Nance's head. So there's Jordan, who has eight points, tied with Grant for the Chicago lead, and Ron Harper has scored eight to top the Cavaliers. Minute gone by, Bulls by four. I just picked up by Williams. This matches Elo on Pippen inside, and they were looking for Pippen on the post-up, but a Cleveland foul is called non-shooting. Foul is on Elo, his second. Year. For Craig Elo to play uh, Williams down in that post-up area, he's given away a lot of size, plus the length of the arms of Williams. If he can just make the catch, he can shoot over the top. Now Williams is on Pippen. Pippen finding room down the middle off the glass. Nance made him change his shot. One of the best shot blocking teams of the Cavaliers. Price spins his way in. Yeah. He went around Corzine, but a fine play. No basket, and Doherty will shoot. On this defense, watch Nance come in here now and apply the intimidation. 
Nance being the fifth leading shot blocker in the league. At the other end of the floor, we just had a, a fantastic pass by Mark Price taking the defense to him and doing a 360. However, Hubie, and as we look at this again, I got to tell you that Craig Hodges has picked up his third personal foul on this play. Doherty will shoot, but now the Cavaliers have the best three-point shooter of the Bulls in foul trouble as he goes to the bench with three. Doherty missed the first free throw and is getting a reaction from the crowd. Well, Hodges will be missed greatly. Now, Cleveland, if they do have an Achilles heel, it is the foul line. They missed 10 foul shots the other night, shot 65%. Very instrumental when you get into a close ball game. But they and Portland are the two lowest teams in the playoffs, shooting at only 74% for the season. One for four from the free throw line for Brad Doherty. Pippen goes for three. Price comes out of the pack. Watch his direction and his decision making here. Harper on the wing. Lost the ball into the hands of Corzine, tied up by Harper. Corzine just walked into that tie up by Harper. He was double teamed and will have a jump ball. Well, you want your big people to play a little bit bigger than this. And you'll see here when this ball goes up and the ball comes down, you want to clear that ball out and be very, very physical. You can't have a guard come in and then force a jump ball situation. And so the Cavaliers got an easy basket trail by two with 9.45 to go in this first half. Jordan has eight points, still the high scorer. Lost going in and is fouled. They hit him in the head is what Tommy Nunez said, and Jordan will shoot a pair. Foul is on Harper, his first. But the big story right now as far as fouls is concerned is Craig Hodges, who is on the bench with three personal fouls. He is the Bulls' best outside shooting guard. Lenny Wilkins prefers his defense to send Michael Jordan to the baseline. He's constantly trying to channel him there. Do not let him into the middle, which he did at that time. Now, that's easier said than done, let's face it. But once he gets in there, he can go airborne and cause you nothing but problems. The great thing for the Bulls' standpoint is that in game one, Jordan scored only nine points in the second half. So they got a lot of help from other people besides King Jordan to spring the victory. But it's 31-27 Bulls. And here's the trap again by Chicago. Well, it, what it is doing, it's slowing Cleveland down offensively, not letting them run their patterns, and then they're making the shot clock go down, and that forces up a tough shot sometimes. Rice forced that over Paxson, knocked out of bounds, and it's Chicago ball. But John Paxson, to his credit, is really battling Mark Price out there, well, not they, giving him an They all are, Dick. But you know what I like so far from Doug Collins? The tenacity of my ball club after the first three or four minutes in only giving Cleveland one shot. Earlier, they were getting more. They clamped down on the defensive board. Three minutes gone by. Second quarter, and Jordan misses outside, and Rollins the rebound. So Harper brings it up. Price is getting banged inside. Nearly lost his footing. He is really working hard and running a lot at the baseline. He misses the shot. He is two for seven from the field. Anyone's ball, and it'll be Harper's. That's what open court majesty can do for you. Now that was pretty. 31 to 29. Bulls lead again cut to two. Jordan's cut off by Harper. Nice. Great feed to Grant. Perfect feed by Michael Jordan. We are seeing tremendous brilliant play inside the paint in this first half. That's Jordan's third beautiful assist off the double team in the paint. Harper picked up on the switch by Corsi. Goes right around him and is clobbered by Horace Grant. Now keep an eye on Price on the baseline. You see, he's going to come around here, fake, now go back down and come off a screen on the other side. Now what you try to do on that catch is to step up, but I think what he would like to have done that time, uh, if he just could have made the bounce pass to the roll guy who stepped right up, it would have had an easy layup that time. But Mark Price is not playing this game at 99%. He is going full out despite the groin injury. Two team fouls for each squad, and Harper hits the first free throw. Bill Cartwright, who has scored two points, replaces Corzine in the Bulls lineup. 7.59 remaining in the first half. 
Harper, an eighth pick out of Miami of Ohio, makes only one of two. Cartwright the rebound. That's the same school that produced Wayne Embry, the club's general manager. Bulls by three. They have led most of this first half. Got it away by Harper out of bounds. It's Cleveland. Nope, Chicago ball. Nunez changed his call, but changed it correctly. Last year in the first round of the playoffs, the Bulls defeated the Cavaliers, winning in a decisive fifth game at Chicago Stadium. That was a year ago. They're going to jump it up as Rollins and Harper were all over Grant. See what I like today, Dick, any time that you're catching the basketball below the foul line, no matter where you catch it, even out on the wing, you are being double teamed at each end of the floor, and it takes a heady player to break the double team and make the pressure pass. Rollins wins the jump into the hands of Price. John Wooden in the corner, basket counts, and a foul against Cleveland away from the ball. The basket will count for John Williams, who was 0 for 7 in game number one. But a loose ball foul is called against Larry Nance, his first. Well, Lenny's exasperated because there were four guys in there, and a lot of bodies were shed at that time. And to pick out Nance, you know, he feels strange because naturally it's his guy. Jordan gets by Harper and draws the foul. Two of the best open court players in the NBA opposing each other, Ron Harper and Michael Jordan. And Jordan got the best of that one, as Sam Vincent will come in for John Paxson. So you have two of the best shot blockers in the league here on one ball club. Larry Nance is fifth, and, and John Williams is in the 11th spot. And they are going to go for every block opportunity. They don't care if they pick up that extra foul. Give me a word for John Paxson. He played gutty defense against Mark Price, did not allow a point in that matchup the time he was in there. I did a very nice job. What it comes down to, you know that you're going to be run off an awful lot of picks. And you, you have to say, hey, I'm going to su sacrifice my body today because these big guys are the ones that are hitting. Put his shoulder in and drew the foul by Vincent. So there's a difference there. Right now, let's go to Tim Brand. Timmy, what do you have? Dick, as much of a mental lift as Mark Price has been for Cleveland, Chicago has its own mental lift. Friday night, they came out in black shoes. It was the idea of Brad Sellers. He said, hey, look, we've got to have a change. We've got to get something new. It's a new season. We lost seven of our last 10 regular season games. So they came out in black shoes. They won Friday night. And they'll continue to wear them as well, as long as they play well. All right, Timmy, and of course, three of the uh, Bulls did not have black shoes. Cartwright, Paxson, and Vincent, so they had to dye their shoes. It was Brad Sellers' idea, but uh, new look, and Doug Collins said, why not? The team certainly has played better with the black shoes, Yubi. But they said, they say when you wear uh, black where the shoes are part of your uniform, you play with more aggressiveness. Some, some guy did a psychological study someplace. Yeah. Jordan batted away by Rollins. One of the top shot blocking teams in the NBA, and you saw why. Nice pass. John Williams inside. Good pass inside by Harper. The Cavaliers have their first lead since they were up 8 to 7 in the first quarter, and a 20 second timeout called by the Bulls. This place is going wild. as you step on through. That's what you like to see your big people do. Dunk with two hands. Before Craig Hodges went out in foul trouble, the Bulls were four of seven. Since he's been out, they haven't hit one. Well, it's not only the fact that the guy makes the shot. It's the fact that he is a threat to make it, so you must keep a defensive player in the corner to cover him. Michael Jordan, triple team, open man. Paxson, inside. Cartwright. Well, Tree Rollins really applied great pressure on that hook that time and then blocked Cartwright off the defensive board. A two-point field goal by Ron Harper, who has 13 points and is the game's high scorer. Jordan leads Chicago with 12. 
But the Bulls have been ice cold thanks to Cleveland's defense. They've hit only one of seven this quarter from the field. Still struggling as Paxson misses. Jordan gets the rebound and the loose ball. So Michael has 14 points. He scored 31 in their victory Friday night, and it's 38-37 Cavaliers. 5.35 to go in the first half. Billy Cartwright got popped that time, and his right arm seems to be uh, deadened, and he's really concerned. Price was fouled by Cartwright, who picks up his second. Yeah, I'm watching Billy. Bill, Billy is staring down the referees because he thought he had good defensive position that time. Brad Doherty will come in in a hand for Tree Rollins, who made things very active inside, including a key block shot. But if you want to talk about the Oakley Cartwright trade and whatever the circumstances are, you'd have to say the Knicks got the better of that deal. Cartwright gets the rebound on Price's miss. And the Bulls trying to regain the lead here, down by one. Pippen will fire for three and hit it. And Scotty Pippen with his second three-point basket of the game gives Chicago the lead by two. Now that was great that he hit the three-point shot, but Michael Jordan is posting up Price, and they must look for that any time that that is available. They go in Darty. Good position against Cartwright and another Chicago foul. They're in the penalty. That is the fifth team foul, and Cartwright has picked up his third. See, Cartwright's exasperated because on the catch of the basketball that time, Doherty lowered his left shoulder and came right into the chest of Billy in order to get the try for the shot opportunity. So Cartwright with three goes out. So Hodges, Cartwright, and Vincent all with three. Cartwright and Hodges are the serious foul trouble people. Valentine has checked in, replacing Price for Cleveland. Porzine for Cartwright. Price goes out having scored six. But Doherty is really having a miserable afternoon. He has connected on only one of five from the free throw line. And as Hubie mentioned, the Cavs missed 10 free throws Friday night in game one. Yeah, but any time that you have a player of Doherty's quality, you're talking an all-star player. We're talking about a guy who is an excellent passer. And here we have three Rollins leaving the court, Dick. Well, and he's followed by Briggs, the trainer. And we'll get an update, I'm sure, from Tim Brand on that situation. Borzine. Darty keeping him out nicely, and this hook shot misses. Rebound by John Williams. Chicago has a definite problem with their big people inside, with Cartwright in foul trouble, and Porzingis has not been effective offensively the other center. Four and a half to play in the first half. Nance misses. Pippen trying to save it out of bounds. Chicago ball. Let's check in with Tim Brand. Anything on Tree Rollins, Timmy? I just talked with Gary Briggs, Dick, the trainer. He said it's his right hand. They've taken him in for x-rays. He's already gone into the locker room, and we'll update you as soon as those x-rays come back. But he has to be removed. He's having a tough time with that right hand, and they're going to x-ray it. Thanks, Tim. Bulls by two. They lost their lead briefly. Here's Jordan. He's short on the long-range shot. One of the things the Cavs said, let's see if he can continue to hit the perimeter shot as he did effectively in the first game of the series. Ron Harper, he's been hitting outside, and a good thing because Nance and Price have been ice cold from the field. And Ron Harper, with 15 points, has hit his last three. The Chicago spacing in their offense has been excellent in this first half. They're getting what they want. Ready to double-team Jordan, and we'll have an illegal defense called against the Cavaliers. It is their first, which means a warning. Next time will be a technical. Craig Elo will check in, replacing John Williams, so the Cavaliers have some a good three-point shooter in there. Well, Lenny, Lenny's upset because it wasn't the call on the two people who were trapping Michael Jordan. It was the three people who were away. One of them was out of the zone area. All right, he's got a good point there. Thrown away by Pippen to Doherty. Nice. Elo didn't have control, but here's Valentine. The shot is deflected by Pippen. And a foul called against Chicago. And Scotty Pippen has picked up his second personal foul. Interestingly enough, did you see where Chicago is shooting only 25% in this quarter, yet their lead, which was six after one quarter, is high right now. So when you're shooting 25 and you're still in the game, that's got to be a plus for them. Yeah, but see, one of their strong suit is at the other end of the floor. They are an exceptional defensive ball club. They're holding you to only one shot opportunity. And then if you do get in the area, 
they foul you and they force you to go to the foul line and Cleveland's been missing their fouls today. They've missed six of 16. Cavaliers by two. Three and a half minutes remaining. Here was the full court pressure by the Cavaliers broken and now the Bulls call a timeout. Of the series in the last two of the regular season has scored six has not shot well but his presence has definitely helped the Cavaliers. But you see when you get a guy like Price you appreciate his vision his court vision he makes so many little things look so simple that you just take them for granted. Steal by Jordan Price is back defending and Price steals it away he picks Michael Jordan's pocket no look pass to Nance. Oh my. Out of bounds Chicago ball two golden opportunities for both teams thwarted by a defense. But what about Price's steal of Michael Jordan. Great play by Price frustration for Cleveland. Nance goes to the glass and really got hammered that time. You're looking at the game clock. The shot clock shows 17 seconds. We're tied at 47. A three-point attempt missed by Paxson, and here's the quick outlet from Nance to Price. Crashing the boards, Davis the rebound, and let's see if the Bulls run it up now. See, I like the Bulls, what they did that time. They took a quick shot on the play before, knowing that they would get another shot opportunity even if Cleveland milked the clock. Smart basketball, Dick. Seven on the shot clock, so a three-point attempt missed by Davis in the corner. Harper with seven seconds to go. The Cavaliers looking for the lead on the last shot. Oh! Harper with, with two seconds to go. Yes, yes, Jordan shot. Thirteen points for Ron Harper this quarter. He's got 21 in the half. And that is the end of the first half here in Richfield Coliseum in a thriller. The Cavaliers 49, the Bulls 47. And Pat O'Brien will return with the Prudential at the half, live from our New York studio after this message. Later this afternoon, as part of our doubleheader, Portland is at Los Angeles for... So, 49-47. Cavaliers start out with Mark Price taking the first shot and missing as we get underway. Pippen the rebound. So it'll be Michael Jordan... And he is starting with Craig Hodges, who's playing with three fouls. Up front, Cartwright with three. Pippen and Grant. Cartwright's wild shot missed, and Doherty gets the rebound. Here's Mike Sanders. Sanders, Nance, and Doherty in the front court. And it's Harper and Price at guard for the Cavaliers. Let me just make a statement here. If you're going to make a shot in the pivot today, you better be a monster, man. <laughs> They're letting the body contact out. And that's oh. one of the things you pointed out about how the playoffs work. Jordan and Hodges got mixed up on the pass, so a turnover will give the ball to the Cavaliers. Cavaliers shot 41% in the first quarter, 53 in the second, and the Bulls went the other way. We'll watch the foul story with Hodges and Cartwright. Pippen on Harper. Grant might have gotten a piece. It doesn't matter. The ball goes through and 23 points for Ron Harper, who averaged nearly 19 a game in the regular year. See, that was a great athlete taking nothing and making it look easy and getting off a terrific shot. He has matured tremendously. He was kind of a hot dog when he first got to Cleveland, but Lenny Wilkins cured him of that. In a hurry. They've made him an all-around player. Dick, he'll make the pass. Oh. Pippen deflected away. Keeps it. Pippen from the corner. The Bulls are rushing. They are impatient right now, and it's costing them. Great observation, Dick. Uh, he has shot two today from the corners without squaring up and, and getting his feet together. He's not a good quick shooter. He's much better when he has time. Scotty Pippen from the corner. If you're Doug Collins and this continues, you call a quick timeout before the game maybe starts to get out of hand? Well, all, all guys are different. Myself, I like to call a quick time if you're not getting what you want. Because this game, you can win this game. A delay of game warning is called against Chicago, I think. Basket by Grant. He's given them 12 points to match his season's average and tremendous shooting from the field. Cleveland by two. Price still off the mark. Rebound by Jordan. See, every shot is off the front of the rim, and he's been consistent all day. Jordan goes in. Oh, man. 
slapped away everything but the basket. That would have been one of the one of the highlights of the year. And we'll have traveling to call against Ron Harper as John Williams will check into the game replacing the Larry Nance. Nance scored only four points in the first half, so the veteran has continued to have his rough time in the playoffs and Hot Rod replaces Well, Williams gave him a good shot in the arm, Dick. He was three for four from the field with four rebounds in limited time. They didn't get much from either guy in game one, but they're getting something from John Williams today. They collapse around Jordan. Ten on the shot clock. Grant. Hard right. Fouled and will go to the line to shoot a pair. From now to the end of the game, if I'm a fan, I, I would zero in on the people trying to get shots in that dark blue painted area. And you'll notice hands right up there, almost on the ball. If the shot block isn't there, you'll see one or two hands contesting. Do we clarify this thing? We talked about Oakley, who has helped the Knicks tremendously, and the fact is that Cartwright hasn't gone to the line as much, hasn't shot as much as he has in the past but it's a different kind of offense and on the face of it it looks like the Knicks got the better of the deal well the Knickerbockers had further to go they only won 38 games last year and then naturally they went over 50 this year this ball club a year ago won 50 games and they would have done it again this year they were on a on a surge to win 52 or 53 before the rash of injuries in the last eight contests is Cartwright giving them what they wanted? Well, I think they're very happy with it because it gives them a low-post player who makes you double-team him that frees other people. Sanders scored the basket. Nearly three minutes gone by here in the third quarter. Cavaliers by two. Biggest lead either side with seven points by the Bulls late in the first quarter. Fall away by Grant misses. Here's Harper. Dangerous open court performer. Goes around Jordan or into Jordan. Whatever your preference, and it's still going to be Cavaliers. Ball. Excellent block that time by Grant. Harris Grant coming across and getting a piece of that shot. You know, Michael Jordan, all that people talk about the offense, and they know he's a good defensive player, but where he excels is in open floor defense. Now, there is Doherty in the paint. Normally, the kind of basket he ate up during the regular year, Jordan is fouled going to the line. Michael Jordan averaged nearly 33 a game this year and led the NBA in scoring for the third straight time, and only six players have led the NBA in scoring three straight years. But he takes 21 shots a game, and this is the knock on the ball club. The next closest guy only takes 11, and then you have Cartwright at nine a game. Because in the playoffs, the majority of the high teams that win a lot of games they have at least three players attempting over a thousand shots on on chicago only one michael jordan but it's a tough it's a dilemma because when you have a talent like that how do you really spread it out as much as you like well the other side when you back that up is he shoots 54 percent and 85 from the line so why not <laughs> <laughs> well we're tied at 53 as jordan has 18 points eight and a half remaining third quarter loose ball grant had it Price gets it back, a five on two. Price goes to the three and hits it. Mark Price. Wayne Embry surveying that one. See, that was nothing but savvy. He knew the three defensive guys were behind him. Price has nine points. Grant and Doherty had bumped Cartwright, and I think they'll call Brad for the foul. If so, it'll be only his second personal. Team fouls, the Cavaliers have three, and the Chicago Bulls, who had been in foul trouble before the Cavaliers in the first two quarters, have yet to pick up a team foul. Well, both teams are working hard to explore, explore the deep, uh, offensive low post game. The trouble is the passes are late getting to the guy when he's open. Jordan lost his balance. Double team nicely that you can credit the Cavaliers' defense, as taught by Lenny Wilkins. Williams beat Harper. And that's what they didn't do in game number one. They didn't beat the other team up court. They're well, doing the old story of making the unselfish pass that gets you the layup. The other day that he was told the day before the opening of the 86 season that he had to sit out, played in the U.S. Basketball League with people like uh, Minute Bowl and Spud Webb, and here he is, but he kept his school and had great support by his family and team. Uh, he, he's a very big family man, and 
Uh, his story is very, a, a very tough story in his upbringing. But what, what a contribution this guy makes in 25 minutes a game. Cleveland foul. It'll be their fourth team foul. One more, and they're into the penalty. And Lenny Wilkins pleading his case to Earl Strom. So 14 fouls against the Cavs, none against Chicago. Three fouls on Hot Rod Williams, the youngster we were just talking about, Michael Jordan. Jordan has not hit the outside shot at all this afternoon. Here's Doherty on the break. And Doherty is struggling. Now Chicago coming back, three on three. Pippen will fire a three. Price. And it's going to be Cleveland ball, and Price blocked out Grant nicely. Great hustle by Mark Price, despite the groin injury, has been a big spark. You see, now watch how Price shields his body there, right up against uh, Horace Grant. 58 to 53, the Cavaliers with their biggest lead of this game. It's been close throughout in the critical scheme, two best of five. The Bulls won on the road here at Cleveland on Friday. This is Price at his best, off the pick and roll. And Bad pass by Williams. Oh, good pass. Bad catch. All right. Good pass. Bad catch. Jordan is fouled under the hoop. I knew it was something like that. <laughs> One or the other, right? But at the southern end of the floor, Michael <laughs> Jordan just hit something there. He made a little skip jump. Uh, everybody in the building, they, one, they do not want to foul. Two, they think that he walked. <laughs> All Michael Jordan knows, and look, he just laid on you a great offensive maneuver. Sanders committing the foul, and Jordan on the line. He has 18 points. Now watch this, like, jump stop here. There it is right there, and then the hesitation move. Are you sure that was a uh, not a bad pass at the other end? <laughs> well, you know what happened at the no. other end? Darty tried to catch the ball with one, one hand. 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 And we're seeing too much of that today at both ends at post up people. But the old story, do not throw the ball to the post guy until he calls for it because then he knows he can catch it with two hands. Great point. Harper, he's been a dynamo today, and he draws the foul, splitting the defense. Harper will go to the line. This is just the start of a big day of action on CBS Sports with the NBA playoffs continuing. The Boston Celtics will try to tie it up against the Detroit Pistons. The Celtics have yet to win on the road against a winning team this year. Pistons got to the finals last year and lost to the Lakers in seven. The Lakers host Portland. Some of you will see that game coming up after this. Well, I think a major loss tonight is uh, Byron Scott with the Los Angeles Lakers, who supposedly is questionable. And then you also have Cooper with the 21 stitches in his forehead. So you're talking two of their three primetime guards. Harper makes one free throw. Jordan picking up his first personal foul of the game. You know what I like about Harper today, Dick? He is not being tentative at all. He's going hard to the best. Fouled out of game one was not a factor. Halfway through this third quarter as Hodges misses outside Jordan fights and gets the basket that's the talent of Michael Jordan personified see he's a two-time jumper he jumped the first time and knocked it out of Doherty's hand came down right back again converts it into a field goal coming off the screen as Price saw an opening to move Williams was tripped up by Pippen it'll be Scotty Pippen with the Chicago foul off this rebound watch Michael Jordan come right in there's his first jump now he has the presence to get back up again Great athletic talent that time. This is a fine playoff game we're watching here at the Richfield Coliseum as the Cavaliers try to even the series. Price front rims the three. Loose ball, Pippen, and Harper hustles, but Chicago winds up with it. And they can tie the game, trailing by two. Jordan double. Hodges for three. He's got it. And the Chicago Bulls lead by one. Looks like the guy who was here Friday night knocking him down. Well, he got into <laughs> foul trouble here. This is so right. different when you pick up those three quick fouls. But Craig Hodges right now has a three-point basket. They try to go to Harper in on a loop pass, not well executed. Jordan breezes by Price, sails in for the basket, and the Bulls, who were down by five just a couple of minutes ago, have opened up a three-point lead themselves, and Liddy Wilkins has called a very rapid timeout. In his hand, and he is
his upset. Well, the big fella's been in many a playoff game with the old Cincinnati Royals and then with the Celtics. And then he is the guy who helped build that incredible Milwaukee franchise. He came out as an expansion team. John Williams has eight points in the game. Cleveland scored five in a row to break a tie, and then the Bulls answered that with a 9-1 to run the last three minutes before Williams hoop. 62-61 Chicago. And here comes Mark Price. Just playing the way he has at full steam today. Price has been magnificent. Question is, will it be enough for the Cavaliers to tie the series? Nance hits one. So Williams and Nance, the two forwards, have hit outside shots. Well, any time that Chicago double teams and they kick the ball out to the big man of Cleveland, they're going to let them take the jump shot. A little pressure. They just don't want them to dribble past them to the field goal. Cavaliers regain the lead by one. Grant goes inside and travels. There he is, Wayne Embry. Who's teaming up with Lenny Wilkins and Gary Fitzsimmons right, right in front of him, Cotton Fitzsimmons' son, who is the head scout here at Cleveland. This is one fine front office organization. They got things down. Miserable franchise. They revived it in a big way. And they've got a great future, too. It's a young, solid team. Nine on the shot clock. Double team on Doherty. Harper is open. And the rebound by Grant. Grant has eight rebounds. He's the top man off the glass for the Bulls all year. And when you're watching a duel today of Jordan and Harper, remember, they're both putting numbers on the board, but then they have to go play the other guy. This is such a fatiguing thing. Hodges goes around Williams. And a loose ball foul called against Chicago. And it's Bill Cartwright's fourth personal foul. Cartwright has four. High scorers in the game, Harper leading Cleveland with 26, and Jordan has 24 for Chicago, and Craig Elo has checked in, giving Ron Harper a rest. Harper gets a hand. He's been sensational. Corzine in for Cartwright, who has four fouls, as we said. Nance. He was two for nine, and has hit two in a row now. He's getting his shooting eye as the Cavs open up a three-point lead. Three minutes to go in the third. Uh, that's his shot. He loves facing the basket 15 to 17 feet. Hodges calling the play at the top of the point with Price defending. Elo is on Jordan. Elo's done a good job against Jordan many times this year, but not that on the time, and Jordan has 26. Well, that's a tough cover. Uh, that, that little curl play that they ran for Jordan. Because Elo's got to make some off difficult the screen. Play. Nance hits the jumper off the screen. Three in a row by Larry Nance. They want him to show the leadership. That's why he is what they call the final piece in the puzzle to the young team. When you're playing a guy like that, Dick, what you must make him do is put the ball on the floor. You can't give him the same standstill jump shot. Pippen, top of the key. He buries it. We are sizzling from the perimeter. And it's a 67-66 game Cleveland. Tree Rollins, who suffered that sprained finger in the right hand and has it bandaged, I think. Although, actually, I'm not too sure. He must have advantage if it's sprained, and John Paxson getting set to come. Penetration by Price, rebound again by Grant. Outlet to Jordan. Hodges lays it in. And the Chicago Bulls have the lead again, 68-67. Well, that's uh, the reason why Hodges was open. Mark Price was shielded and pinned on underneath his offensive basket. 143 to go in the third. Chicago making serious inroads on the road for the second straight game, but Doherty with maybe his niftiest play of the game. And I'll tell you, he had to bump two guys in order to get that shot. Turnover. Hodges was cutting. Jordan could have hit him. Watch Brad Doherty now drop that left shoulder, get Corzine one time, and now make the move against the double team. Michael Jordan has come out of the game. He's going to get a breather. And John Paxson replaces him with the Cavaliers leading by one. And 119 now remaining in the third quarter. Trey Rollins in, as we told you. Elo feeding inside. Williams is fouled. Great pass by Craig Elo. Again, he'll be, as you mentioned, sensational passing in the paint by both teams today. 
First of all, that's a sign of unselfish play. And second of all, great defense, because they are not allowing the player to take it right to the front of the rim unless he gives a super, super athletic move. Scotty, go ahead. Scotty Pippen's fourth foul. So Cartwright and Pippen have four for the Bulls. What I liked about Hot Rod Williams at that time, he went in and he was going to get that Tomahawk done for him. Cleveland has missed nine from the line after missing ten in game one. Charles Davis, who has hit a three-point basket and really is a presence, has come in replacing Pippen, who goes out with four fouls. Pippen has 12 points, including two from three-point range. Well, if I'm Doug Collins, I'm very concerned because they are my two premier guys that I need, along with Jordan, on the floor in the last six minutes of this game. Cleveland putting on their version of the trap with a minute to go in the third quarter. Cavaliers lead it 70 to 68. Closely contested game from the start. Davis misses a three. Corzine can't keep it alive. Valentine is going in for Price. The Cavs try to work on a two point lead. Price has scored nine. Williams posting up, but Nance follows with the basket as the Bulls fail to block out the Cleveland forward. The differential on the shot clock is seven seconds. You're looking at the game clock here in the third quarter. Cavaliers need a win to just tie the series at one apiece to send it to Chicago for games three and four. Hodges missed the three. Davis has it with eight seconds. Wild shot by Davis is short. And a reverse layup is tipped. No basket as the Cavaliers held off. And that's the end of the third period. Cleveland 72, Chicago 68. We'll return to the Richfield Coliseum after this message and a word from your local station. Michael Jordan back in action has 26 points, scored 10 in the third quarter. He's with Paxson at guard. Up front, it's Pippen, Corzine, and Davis. Pippen playing with four personal fouls. Going by Elo is Jordan, high off the glass. Nance has it knocked away. So now the Cavaliers, they have Valentine and Elo at guard as Price and Harper get a rest as we start the fourth. Up front, it's Tree Rollins, John Williams, and Larry Nance. Jordan with 26 and Harper with 26 are the high scorers. They made him put it on the ground, as Hubie said. Nance couldn't get the shot off. Valentine follows it up. Basket counts and a foul. Big hoop for Valentine. Darnell Valentine gave this club a real shot in the arm the other night. It just wasn't enough. Now, off it is, you'll see how he turns his back parallel to the baseline and just throws it up there. Gets the lucky bounce. Foul is on Charles Davis, eight-year veteran who had been with Portland and the L.A. Clippers. He played 33 solid minutes, and a seven-point lead is the biggest of the game now for the Cavaliers. Well, Valentine gives them a good defensive player, and he'll push the ball hard in the open floor. Paxson puts a fake on Valentine. Very smart defender is Darnell. Double team, and Paxson with a runner gets two of them back. That was a difficult shot that time. Anytime that you're up at the top of your release and then bring it down to your number and then put it back up again, that's a difficult adjustment because you're in the air. Nance. Nance scored eight of his 14 points in the third quarter. Elo and Jordan, the matchup here. They'll call the foul against Darnell Valentine. Each team with one team foul here in this fourth quarter. Well, Darnell is quick enough to bump you as a defensive player and then still slide. He's got excellent lateral movement off the dribble. Horace Grant and Bill Cartwright come in. And Doug Collins going now with the starting front court of Pippen, Cartwright, and Grant. Grant, the leading rebounder. Cartwright has scored only four points but has four personal fouls. Grant with nine boards. Pick it and spot up to Scotty Pippen. Did not work well. 
Jordan. Foul. But, Hubie, it looks like the Chicago Bulls are struggling to get an offensive thing going down there. Yeah, they are because their spacing, which was so good in the first half, has now become congested, and everything is inside of 15 to 17 feet. They are not hitting the outside shot. Now, when they throw the ball into the post, and Cleveland double teams quickly, when the ball comes out of the post-up situations, Cleveland is doing an excellent job in getting to the perimeter people and then not letting them penetrate off the dribble. Michael Jordan, who picked up a slew of triple doubles down the stretch when he became a point guard, and the team did very well before the injury set in, had his best rebounding year of his career, and it's a five-point Cavalier advantage. Here's the trap by Chicago. Now, the weakness has always been oh, into the corner and then down the middle. Basket by Williams, good and a foul. They must have an earpiece over there. Now, listen here. Impressive. that the Cavaliers have been resting Mark Price since the last minute plus of the third quarter and they can afford to do that with a seven point lead and now John Hot Rod Williams misses the shot from the line and Rollins keeps it alive Nance over the top each team has enjoyed a seven point lead in this game the Bulls just before the end of the first Cleveland now look at this shot blocking front line for Cleveland Rollins one of the top three probably in the history of basketball, along with Hot Rod Williams and Nance, two of the top ten in the league right now. Cartwright working inside against Rollins. Rebound by Williams. Nine and a half remaining in the fourth quarter. Chicago led by six after one. Cleveland had a two-point lead at the half and then stretched it to four after three quarters. And they continue to increase their lead. Three on the shot clock. Elo has to fire it away wildly. The rebound by Cartwright into the hands of Green. See, if Chicago can get the ball out, they can fast break this Cleveland ball club right now. Valentine is guarding Jordan. Cartwright posting up against Williams. Cartwright with a lefty hook as his third basket. If the Bulls can somehow get the ball to their big guy and get fouls or go to the line or score, that could be a difference, too. But Cleveland has a five-point lead. Baked by Nance. He's having a game. 16 for Larry Nance. Well, Lenny, after the game on Friday night, Lenny Wilkins really wanted him to assert himself a little bit more. They need his experience and the fact that he's a guy that can get you 25 to 30 on any given night. They go again to Cartwright. Rollins, an experienced defender inside. Cartwright works his way in. Tough inside play with the defender and the potential scorer. While outside of a new ball, you know, Rollins has the next, how shall I say, widest wingspan of any other player. Under eight minutes now remaining in the fourth. Darnell Valentine left open. Grant with the rebound, and Horace Grant now with 12 boards at 13 in the first game. Jordan lost it out of bounds. He got a little impatient. Yeah, but let's give Greg Elo some credit for the excellent defense on Michael as he came and changed direction on that. for Cleveland and Harper has checked back in and Mark Price will follow with the next dead ball so the Cavaliers have rested starting guards coming in at crunch time Hodges picks off the pass Pippen throws up a wild shot Lenny Wilkins they're going to jump it up Lenny Wilkins told us that Scotty Pippen is a lot more dangerous spotting up from the corner than he is on the run and he showed why there well he has a he has a difficult time with shot selection here we have excellent hustle by both ball clubs on this loose ball 
tell me they don't want this. <laughs> this has been one of many jump balls that we've had today. Same kind of action. Timeout called by the series. You get a good bracket. It's certainly, you know, if you're away from Detroit, you've got a chance, wouldn't you say? Right. He was extremely anxious about that and naturally feeling good because of the win on Friday night. Mark Price, who rarely shows emotion getting upset, out of bounds, Chicago ball. Watch the hustle on this. It, is, it explains the action. Seven-point lead for the Cavaliers. They've got Price and Harper. They're starting backcourt in there. Go inside now to Grant. Pass back Pippen. Rebound by Price. Pippen has missed two in a row. The question is, where is Chicago going to get their offense from other than Michael Jordan? Well, see, in the previous games going into Friday night, Pippen was 5 for 25. Friday night, he had a sensational game, 7 for 11, but 4 for 4 and threes. Pick and roll to Nance. You're right. Double team nicely. One second on the clock, and Nance hits the basket with one second showing on the 24-second clock. Price with 11. And nine-point lead. Pippen with a fake. Hodges with a behind-the-back turnover. Price will get the layup. Place it closed. Doug Collins telling his team, easy, relax, get it up, and let's make something happen here. Cavaliers are playing their game to perfection, and it's the moment of truth for Chicago as they block Michael Jordan. Three Rollins. Three Rollins. Great rotation that time. You'll see this. Oh, look how far Rollins came to get that shot. This is the moment of truth for the Chicago Bulls if they want to stay in this game. Pippen has a shot block. And now is fouled. But even that shot wasn't a wise one. He was under the basket on the baseline. Well, it's almost an impossible percentage shot. And then they had their two best shot blockers on top of you. And, you know, it keeps coming down here with Chicago. You know, Doug is frustrated. But it's no use yelling and screaming here right now because he knows they're playing as hard as they can. It comes down to experience of backing the ball out, running the offense, and getting a good shot opportunity. And he was there many a time. Four-star, all-star all player here, you know, in his days with the all Philadelphia 76ers. And how about this guy? <laughs> He'll be going to the Hall of Fame a week from Tuesday. Lenny Wilkins. Pippen makes one of two. Can the Bulls maintain their poise for one last run? Cleveland looks like they have things going their way with a lot of time remaining. 5.35 to go in the fourth. Harper, having a brilliant game, gets two more and 28 on the game. Jordan can't do it alone, and he knows it. He's got to get offensive help from someone else, and the Cavaliers clamping down on everyone else. Jordan banks one from outside, where it hasn't been easy for Michael from out there, and he has 30 points, Cleveland by 10. There's the timeout story, plenty for both teams. Ten on the shot clock now. Price. And Grant, who's gotten great position for the defensive board all day for the Bulls. Ten-point lead. Hodges. Offensive foul. They give Harper a lot of credit. Now, he, he, he came in this late prime time score. Everyone said, you know, a little bit on the selfish side. Doesn't like to work. A gambler on defense. Doesn't put his nose in there. But how about that play right there? He put his nose in there. Absolutely. Plus, he's become a very, very good passer in traffic. Fifteen seconds on the shot clock. Trey Rollins, John Williams, Larry Nance up front for the Cavaliers. Mark Price and the man inbounding, Ron Harper. Price playing despite a groin injury. 
Harper off the glass, the rebound by Grant. You can't measure what Price has meant to the Cavaliers by the numbers today. No, and also Rollins. Rollins' is contribution here with the matchup with the three shot blockers as we see. Hodges with a two, I believe. It's a two-point basket by Craig Hodges. His foot was on the line. So it's 87-79. Four minutes, 14 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. And Scotty Pippen has picked up his fifth personal foul. One more and Pippen is gone. You hate to foul somebody when the guy is out of his range, especially if he has no place to go off the dribble. keeps it alive but those long rebounds can almost go to anybody well that's why teams like to shoot threes because it's incredible the high percentage that you get the ball back because the ball rebounds so long mark price has played 31 minutes has 13 points and four assists three minutes and 48 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter of game number two. Plenty of time in this game, but, yeah. but Chicago must get back to what they were doing for a long period of time, and that is allowing Cleveland only one shot opportunity, and it's got to come from the defensive end. Four on the shot clock, and Harper short with it. Knocked away. Cleveland has it. So there... Whatever reason you want to say, whether it's hustle or breaks or what have you, Cleveland winds up with the ball again in a new clock. Nance spots up in and out. Rollins tips it in the air, and Pippen has it. Let's see what Chicago has in mind. Trailing by eight. Jordan leads with 30. Pippen wide open for a three. He's been way off the mark in this fourth quarter. Yeah, he was really wide open that time. They set a nice baseline double screen for him. And that'll be the fourth team foul against Chicago. One more in there in the penalty. The foul against Jordan, his second foul. Pippen is 0 for 5 this quarter. So Doug Collins has to figure out where he's going to get the points from if he's going to make a rally here. Coming up next, Celtics and Pistons. Out west is Portland and L.A. There's an excellent track. They got plenty of time on the shot clock to the Cavaliers. Williams goes in, offensive foul. Clearly going right into Grant. When you enjoy professional basketball, you, you really have to credit both clubs here today for their incredible rotation. The quickness is there, the sacrificing of the body, and then the blocking out once the shot goes up. 2.25 remaining, fourth quarter. Cavaliers looking for the home win to even the series at one apiece. Chicago already has won the road game. Kicked away by Harper, and it's still Chicago's ball. A good call by Ed Middleton. Harper had made the steal and then kicked it away. Only five seconds on the shot clock right now. In Friday night's game, Chicago did an excellent job. Oh, watch out here now. Doug Collins a little frustrated. Did they change the, the ball goal? away? You can see the frustrations on Collins here. Out there calling that. It, one guy had it one way, the other had it the other. So what you do now is you jump it up. I thought it was definitely kicked away by Harper. Getting back to the pick and roll situation, Dick, Friday night, Chicago wore Cleveland out. Cleveland did a very poor job defending it, but tonight they're jumping out, trapping Jordan right away, and forcing him to give up the basketball. Rollins and Cartwright will jump. Now I'm not sure who will jump. It'll Harper and Jordan, apparently. Harper and Jordan with 2.16 to go. Big possession for the Cavaliers. Neither team has scored in the last two minutes and 20 seconds. That's how intense it's been, really. Hustle, tight, taut defense. 
Eight on the shot clock, under two minutes to go. Williams against two defenders, scores and is fouled. Huge basket for the Cavaliers. After Williams catches this ball, watch how quick the double team is there. Cartwright and Grant, and he still gets the shot. He went against two defenders and scored. And John Williams misses the free throw. The foul was on Cartwright. He has five. Cartwright. The baseline turnaround, his patented shot, 89-81, eight-point game. This game is not over, not with three-point baskets in the NBA. This hey, game listen, is not over. Yesterday, Philadelphia right. was sitting on a 10-point lead with two minutes to go, and look what New York did. But it's got to come with the defense, just like New York yesterday. Two backboard turnovers. Offensive foul. Either an offensive foul or a turnover. It may not have been a foul. Uh -huh. Out of bounds. Price went out of bounds, and a good jump switch by Bill Cart right there. Yeah, listen, he looked uh, a little bit like Fred Astaire. He made his quick move, cut off the baseline move. He won't get carried away, but you're close. <laughs> Cartwright comes back with another key basket with 107 to go and a six-point lead, 89-83. Now let's see how the Cavaliers respond. Good back pick by Rollins. Sent Harper's man smack into him. 14 on the shot clock. On any foul, Cleveland will be shooting the penalty. Not so for a Cavalier foul. They have one to give. Harper, wide open, hits the jump shot. 30 points for Ron Harper. He became open because Michael Jordan went for a steal at the top of the circle. Timeout. At all against the Cavaliers. Well, you know, one of the players said yesterday for Cleveland, we're not panicking. We know we play well in Chicago. We have beaten them three for three there. Michael Jordan trying to find an opening. Hodges from the corner. In and out with the three. Cartwright tried to get it back to Hodges and it's picked off by Harper. And stepping on the line was Harper. It'll be Chicago ball. But what an alert play because you didn't expect him to go out there. Watch the anticipation. There it is right there. Because they know, Cleveland knows, that every rebound that Chicago is going to rebound, turn around, and try to hit the people deep. And Hodges is over in that right-hand corner. That scouting with the videotape pays off. Hodges from the other corner, in and out. Pippen follows it up with a hoop. 23 seconds to go, 91-85. If they don't get a steal, the Bulls will have to foul, and that's what Paxson does to Tree Rollins with 21 seconds to go. Good so man Rollins, foul. Yeah, 63% free throw shooter. There's a guy who has been in the background today. Brad Doherty, who was held to nine points in the first game of the series, has only six today. The first two games of the series have not been Brad Doherty. No, but that's okay because when they throw into him, he's smart enough to understand that when you get double and triple team to get the ball to other people. Don't force things. But Rollins is in foot today, Dick. Outstanding. The intimidation and the shot blocking. Nance goes out to big hand. Nance has scored 16. Far cry from game one. And Rollins, the 63% shooter, and makes both free throws. The lead is eight. George loses it as it was hit by a Cavalier. Pippen hits the three. Makes it 93-88 with nine seconds to go. Six-point game, and they foul Harper. But if Harper makes the free throws, five-point lead, excuse me, but if Harper makes the free throws, you can just about wrap this one up. And a moment for Ron Harper, who has tied his playoff high with 30 points and can establish his new postseason high. Of course, he only played last year for the first time in postseason with one free throw. See, now here's the guy who benefited the most today by Price being in uniform. Because Friday night, he had to play the point. Definitely took away from his game getting out early on a shot or even after a field goal, getting up on the right side and taking your one-on-one. -on -one. He played like, how should I say, more free today, less tentative, because he didn't have to run the offense and be bogged down trying to make decisions. And he fouled out as well, so it was an unusual situation. Standing ovation now. Mark Price going to the line. The crowd knows this game is history. 
Mark Price has played 35 minutes today. And he has given the Cavaliers an incredible boost. As Hubie just mentioned, Harper could play his normal spot. And only Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, along with Price in the history of the NBA, have gone through a season shooting 50% from the field and 90% from the free throw line. Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, and now Mark Price this season. Harper's 31, by the way. Sets a Cleveland playoff record. Jordan getting ready for game number three. He scored 30. And now the best of three series. That's what it is now with the series tied 1-1 with Cleveland's victory. The best of three series with the Bulls having the home court edge in games three and four. And if game five will be back next Sunday here in Chicago. Cleveland wins at 96-88 right now. Let's join Tim Brandt. Tim? All right, Dick. Ron Harper, 31. 31 points, 11 rebounds, and 4 assists. And Light Beer is proud to present a check for $1,000 on behalf of Ron Harper to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. Right now, let's send it to you. And these pistons are aching for a chance.